reason for that. Hey guys, welcome back to the Extraordinary Sisters. Today's adventure is a boat tour. I guess if you want to see the boat tour and what we're going to see, you have to just come along because I'm yeah. not going to tell you. Yeah. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Ding! Let's go! spot a very very old village known for shipbuilding boat building and ahead of us right here is Rock Island Light this is a state park and we are the only tour boat company and proud to say that are allowed to dock there it has to do with the small size of our boats the big guys can't go there and we set up tours where we allow people a good hour plus on that island go up into the light literally up into the top of it into the lighthouse keeper's cottage. It's built in the 1880s. It's lovely. Originally that light was only the top portion you see from the black up. It sat atop a cottage in the middle of the island beginning in 1847. 1882 it was moved down, jacked up 20 feet, made more sense to be right by the water, didn't it? And they built that new cottage that you see there now, the red one as we go by. It's a lovely spot. There's some great shipwrecks right off the face of it. The A.E. Vickery's a very prominent one. A big three-masted schooner that hit that troll where that green marker was in 1889. Went to the bottom. It's one of our favorite dives here in the river. It's tricky. The current is really tough. you got to be a strong man and be tied off or hang on to a line all the way down. Or you're going to be by that bridge in about 20 minutes. Not safely either. What's the depth on that? Uh, it's about 90 to 120. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of pointed down into the channel. It's on white sand. It's very beautiful. But originally it was a French gunboat with six big heavy cannon on board called the Iroquois. It was captured by the English down at Fort Levy, the other side of Preston, Ontario. Remember at one point all of Canada was two friends very dear to my ancestry and everything else. Anyway, there was such a battle there at the Fort one day where the British captured the Iroquois, brought it back to York, Toronto, refitted it somewhat, but the six big bronze cannons were still on deck. And uh, they sank it by hitting the Niagara Shoal back there, coming this way. And when it sank, it was very shallow, only about 40 feet deep in the water. You could literally look down and see the cannon. So in the building of the seaway, they realized something had to be done. They had to knock it deeper into the channel. The big mass was still on it, too. So what they did was hire a bunch of divers to pull those heavy cannon off it. Fortunately, uh, one ended up in Watertown, New York, in the courtyard of JCC. That's why we call it the Cannoneers. That's one of those French guns back in the 1730s. I belong to a dive group in Clayton. We recently got a notice from a young lady down in Cortland that her father had been one of the divers that removed those guns from the decks before the state knocked it into the river deeper. So we inherited a two-ton bronze cannon, our dive group did. We've got to go down and get it. We're going to put it on Rock Island back there. It makes sense because it went by there probably 20 times since life. So that was quite exciting. This is our Thousand Island Bridge, the first of five bridges that take you into Canada's mainland. After the second bridge, you are in Canada, but on the islands. This was dedicated in 1938 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Queen Elizabeth, William Lyon Mackenzie King, the Premier of Canada. Lots of people argued about this. Why are you building a bridge from nowhere to nowhere? Really? The commerce this represents? 
three million transports a year, all the cargo, all the money, you know. They, I don't know if they represent the states or what exactly they are. I'm not sure. But imagine not liking it that. Can you imagine? I hope you enjoyed the rest of your life, whatever it was like anyway. It's crazy. Well, me and that weather vane spent three years together. He was a project I inherited from Will Salisbury, a late river artist, who was in his last years and he knew it. He had no strength left in his hands at all. Asked me to help him through some projects. So first job was to cut 4,800 individual hairs, six different sizes out of uh, 16 gauge steel with a plasma cutter and TIG weld them onto the torso. You see the little bears on the island? Those are his children, we created those too. All this property over here all has to do with George Bolt and everything else, and I think they're really good like that. This is River Hospital, it's very valuable to everyone. Very good reason for that. So this is the powerhouse, 1904. They hadn't yet decided on which form of electricity was going to power the house. Both was friends, both with Thomas Edison and Tesla. They both spent a lot of time in this part of the world. It's very intriguing. So the powerhouse, also the generator house, would have operated everything in the castle had it ever gone that much into Nelson Island. 60 feet wide. At the end of it built a huge farm. The purpose of that farm was to grow everything for the Bellevue Tractor and the Walmart Story. It was taken every morning to Clayton by boat, packed in ice, box cars, two trains a day to New York City and Philadelphia. At one time, he had three of those boat houses. The other two were to the left of it. Look at those high doors for the steamer docks on his biggest boats. The crew quarters there to the left, beautiful kitchens, libraries, sleeping quarters for all his captains. Yes, he is. He's up above the nest. As we go by this tower, folks, you'll get a really good look at him. And feel free to take a look. I mean, it's rare you see an eagle in the wild like this. He's a big, big bird. We clear a shot of him here. I don't see him. Oh, yeah, I see him. I see it now. Pretty cool, eh? Little eaglets are in that nest. We've seen their heads bouncing up and down. for today of our day seven of your eight day vacation series make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell ding uh don't be afraid to follow a dream have an extraordinary day bye